Hey, what's up kids? Welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. Today, we're doing a little bit of work on Go Man Go. And if you've been following along on the channel, you know I have been playing with a little bit of flex fuel and E85. I was able to do that because I had the dual drop-in fuel pump system. Super nice setup, great for these cars. I'll leave a link to the top for the install on that. And during the summer months, uh, I was running full E85, no trouble. Uh, what I wanted to keep an eye on was the injector duty cycle. And if it was, <clears throat> you know, above 70, 75 degrees out, the injector duty cycle would be somewhere in the 70% range on full E85, which was good to go. And I was using the uh, Injector Dynamics ID1000, not even the 1050s, just the ID1000 injectors. I bought them a while back when I knew I was gonna put the 272 pulley on the car, way before I ever did the dual drop-in uh, fuel pump system, and they were working great. What I started to check, or what I double-checked, is when the weather started to cool off over the winter, uh, I went out on like a 40 degree day, and this is like, you know, holy grail, unicorn and rainbows type weather. I would probably never get an opportunity to run and this type of air at the drag strip. If I could, it would be definitely a personal best. I don't know what the DA was, but let's say it was probably negative 1500 if I had to guess. And I went out and did a in, uh, injector duty cycle test, which means I made a wide open throttle pull through third gear and fourth gear. And obviously kept an eye on my air fuel ratio on my dash to make sure nothing was going too crazy. I logged it with my HP tuners, got back to the shop and I started looking at some stuff and I was noticing the um, injector duty cycle starting to tickle like 82, 84% and that was on um, ethanol that was around E80, E78, something like that. So I was getting close to maxing, maxing out the fuel injectors. Still good to go though. A lot of people say you can't even do that. You can't run the 85 unless you have great big injectors. And I was doing it on the ID1000s without too much trouble. But I started keeping my eyes open for, um, uh, you know, those ID1300s or 1700s, they get pretty expensive. So I started just watching some of the forums for a used set to pop up for a good deal. And I thought if they ever did, I'll snag them just for peace of mind. And eventually, like happens a lot with these cars, people start changing setups. And a buddy of mine actually decided to change his setup and he happened to be running some ID1300s and he hadn't had them very long, like, like six months or so. And so um, I offered to buy them from him. He made me a good deal. So I snatched them up. I'm not gonna go through how to install them. I'll link to that to the top too. If you wanna see how to swap the injectors out in this car, I've done it before. I'm gonna talk today more about the why rather than the how. So you can think of a fuel injector kind of like a valve. And so it's got pressure behind it and it opens and closes in a pulse, injector pulse width, that's where that term comes from, and it sprays fuel in those pulses. The more injector duty cycle you have, the faster and closer together those pulses are. And if you ever hit, you know, 90, 100% injector duty cycle, the injector's almost just staying open and just spraying fuel constantly. And that makes them unstable and you can run into some fuel delivery issues. Mine were hitting, like I said, about 82%, maybe 85% in, in that really, really good air. Now keep in mind, I'm running a 272 pulley. I've got the uh, red eye engine in the car and that red eye engine has the larger cam. It's the same as the Demon. So it's got a bigger cam in it. A lot of people get hung up on how much boost a car makes. A lot of times, how much boost does it make? Well, it makes about between 17 and 18 pounds of boost depending on the weather. It doesn't seem to really matter if it's hot or cold. The big difference is the air molecules in the air are more dense when it's cooler out. That's why cars run so much better in cold air. I could run the same amount of boost on a cold day, the car is gonna run better because more air molecules are making their way into the engine. The car has a bunch of sensors on it. You know, it's got an IET sensor, it's got a MAP sensor. I think these even have a MAF sensor, mass airflow, and it can calculate what the density of that air is, and that's what a lot of the tune tables are based on. I'm not gonna get super, super technical because I know that kind of starts to gloss over a lot of people, but bottom line, I was seeing like 2,100 milligrams of air charge, which is way on up there. So a factory Hellcat might see 13 to 1,400. On a warm day, um, I might see 16 or 1,700 as is, and that's when the car was pretty happy with the ID1000s. 
On that um, test that I ran the other day when it was about 40 degrees, I saw 2100 plus or minus a little bit of air charge in the log. And that's when I started to see that injector duty cycle go up. I'm also running the car up to 6,500 RPM. So RPMs also take, take into account injector duty cycle. The faster that engine's turning, the more fuel it needs to spray. So came across these as a good deal. Had I not come across them, I probably would have just kept it as is. Maybe dialed the uh, ethanol content back just a little bit, kept it around E70. I don't know if you realize this, but on ethanol, once you pass about E60, some people even say E50, you're getting almost all the benefit of the fuel. So you get the cooling effect, you get the increased timing that you can run as a result of the octane. I think E50 is around 97 octane, E70 is like 98 octane, and that's assuming fully 85 is 100. Um, some people say fully 85 is 105 octane. I've always used 100 just as a safety margin. So keep that in mind too. I could have run E70 and been good to go. And honestly, you know, if I were looking at buying these brand new, that's what I would have done because these are, these are pretty expensive to go and swap out from ID1000s to ID1300s. These are the 1300X. Again, got a really good deal on them, so why not, right? So now I'm gonna swap them out. I'll show you guys some data log material just so you can kind of have an idea of what you're looking for in your car if you decide to monitor some of this stuff. And I recommend you do, even if you've got a great tuner that you trust, it's really good to educate yourself as a customer if you're gonna have a car like this that you're gonna modify so that you know what you're looking at in your data logs. You don't have to be an expert, uh, but at least have some knowledge of it so that when you do have those conversations with your tuner, they can be intelligent conversations and you'll get more out of it in the end. The downside is because I'm putting bigger injectors in the car, unfortunately it means I'm gonna to have to completely rescale the fuel system. So I had done quite a bit of work uh, getting the ID1000s dialed in where they are calculating ethanol content almost perfectly. I would say they're within 5%, which is really, really good. So I could put E85 in the car and it would calculate it between E80 and E85. I could put 93 octane in the car and it would calculate it around between E15 and E20. Seemed to be a little bit more accurate on the E85 end of the spectrum than it was the 93, but it wasn't throwing any codes or doing anything like that on, on any range of the fuel. And I have been running the flex fuel setup for several months now, almost a year really. So I've got to rescale these injectors because now that they're bigger, I've got to tell the car when the injector opens, more fuel is going to be spraying. So I'm going to kind of have to start from scratch on that. Luckily, having gone through it with the ID1000s and with some guidance from Mike at OST Dino, I'm hoping, I got my fingers crossed, that I can get this done a lot faster. When I did the ID1000s, it, it took me a couple of weeks of driving around on 93 to get the fuel trims dialed in just right. The fuel trim is basically um, the car reading the exhaust. You've got wide bands in the exhaust. It reads the exhaust and it knows the lambda or air fuel ratio of the exhaust and fuel and air coming through the engine. And it tells it to either add or subtract the amount of fuel the injector is spraying and it's measured in percent to meet the target you've told it to meet in the tune. I hope that's clear. So you get a short-term and a long-term fuel trim because it's trimming the fuel to make it line out to exactly what you've commanded it to be. Well, now that I've put these bigger injectors in there, or once I get them in, I'll have to go back through that process. And I'm hoping with my experience with the ID1000s, I can dial in a lot more quickly, but it's a process. All right, so like I said, done this before, linked it to the top. I have pulled the um, fuel pump relay out of the little box in the trunk, cranked the car over till it basically sputtered and died. There shouldn't be much or if any fuel in the fuel rail. Still got some rags out. Gonna pop the fuel rails off, get these injectors swapped out. So that's pretty much it. I got the injectors swapped out. Not too terrible of a job. It's a little bit tedious and you can expect a busted knuckle or two. Again, if you haven't seen that and you wanna know how to do it, go back and watch the how-to video when I put in the ID1000s. Once you get them in, it's very important that you key cycle the engine without starting it a couple of times and let the pressure build up in the fuel system. And then I always wait a minute or two and then I walk around the engine bay, looking at each injector, make sure I don't see a leak visually. I make sure I don't feel one with my fingers. I always check each and every injector at the intake port as well as the fuel rail. You wanna be double, triple, quadruple sure you don't have any fuel leaks. 
you know, kind of check for an aroma of fuel. That might be a little bit more tricky if, you know, a little bit's going to leak out of the fuel rail. Even though I had fired the car up or pulled the fuel pump relay and tried to fire the car up, it wouldn't start, but it cycled over. I let it cycle over about 10 times, and that is to get all the pressure out of the fuel system, but there was still just a little bit of fuel left in the fuel rails. I used an old t-shirt underneath the uh, fuel injector when I would pop it out, because when you, when you pull the injector set out of the intake, you won't really get any fuel. It's when you actually pull the fuel injector from the fuel rail that some will tend to want to trickle out a little bit there. Make sure you got good ventilation, use all your safety, you know, common sense stuff, have a fire extinguisher close by. Definitely don't do that right after the car has been driven. Uh, this one has been driven about 24 hours. So everything's nice and cool. Finally, before you fire the car back up, I recommend you let it set an hour just so that any um, fuel that happened to have gotten in a crevice or somewhere you didn't see, let, the, let that evaporate and go away. Leave the hood up. Again, plenty of ventilation before you really fire the car up. Final thing, when you're changing fuel injectors or even changing the injector data in your tune, make sure you go into HP tuners. I'll show you how to do this now. Go into HP tuners and reset all adaptives. You click on the little green button at the top, special functions and reset adaptives. You do have to have the key uh, ignition on, but don't start the car. And that will clear out all of those short-term and long-term fuel trims I talked about earlier. So you're basically starting from a clean slate with your new injectors and your new injector data. If you don't do that, it could be hard to start the car. You might get smoke from it being too rich or it might not start because it's too lean. You just wanna clear all that out, let the car figure everything out again now that you've got new injectors and new injector data. Uh, in the system there. Now somebody may ask, well Speedy, what injector should I use in my car? Should I use ID 1000s if I'm gonna run flex fuel? Should I go to 1300? Should I go to 1700? Should I use FIC? My answer, the short answer, is use whatever the tuner you're going to have write the tune for your car recommends. Each tuner will be um, usually more um, familiar with some injectors over others. They're used to writing tunes for those injectors and they'll prefer them. So go with whatever they recommend. Don't try to skimp and save a couple of bucks and say, well, the 1300s are you know, $2,000. I wanna save $600 and get the ID 1000s because Speedy was able to do that on E85. I, I was able to do it and I didn't have any trouble. I'm a little bit above sea level, which is important. I'm probably 800 feet above sea level, not, not too much. Um, and I never hardly ever see minus 1500 DA or minus 2000 DA. So it took a couple of things in order for me to max out those ID 1000s. They weren't really maxed out, but they were close. I don't really wanna see an injector go over about 80% and mine were hitting 82 to 85. So they were right there on the edge in probably minus 1500, minus 2000 DA, which is rare around here. I'm probably never gonna be able to be at the track when it's like that. It's just, just is what it is. I think the best DA I've ever seen at the track is like minus 300. So, um, at that DA, minus 1500 or whatever, 40 degree air, I was seeing that 2100 milligram of air charge like I talked about before, and that was putting too much pressure for my comfort zone on the injectors. I came across a good deal on some 1300s and snatched them up. I probably wouldn't have gone out and bought brand new 1300s to replace my ID 1000s though, to be honest. Bottom line, go with what your tuner recommends, and if you're doing a brand new build, buy your injectors with the end game in mind. I did mine in, in pieces. Um, back when I did this car, or first started working on it, flex fuel really wasn't a thing. So if it had been, I probably would have looked around for a bigger injector to begin with. When I started, I went with the 272 pulley and the ID 1000 injectors because I knew that's what would work. And really cool air, again, out testing, I noticed the fuel pump, the factory fuel pump was maxed out. So I bought the um, dual pump drop-in system, which then gave me quite a bit of fuel system overhead. Then I started messing with the flex fuel, which had come about since then. And now I'm at the point where I felt like I found a good deal on some ID 1300s. Better go ahead and snag them and drop them in the car. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as our website, www.speediesgarage.net. Hopefully I'll see you out there. Now I've got some driving to do to dial those injectors in.